Hey guys, welcome to my channel. So as you all know, IB results were recently released and I got a 44. Specifically, I got five sevens, one six, a B on my TOK and an A on my psychology extended essay. Juggling the demands of the IB alongside college applications and everything else that was going on was definitely challenging. So if you're currently doing the IB or if you're going to enroll in the IB program, I get it. I feel you. After all, I just went through it. So this video is going to be about math applications and interpretation. I took it at the higher level and I got a 7. So I thought I'd share some of the study strategies and habits that worked for me and that I found helpful. So in this video, I'll primarily focus on how I studied over the course of the two or one and a half years, but I will also mention some test taking tips for the weeks nearing your mocks or your IB exams. First, I am going to kind of show you guys how I took notes and how I studied. So I had three notebooks. This one, basically I use this for doing all my exercises and problems. I use this mainly for practice questions, textbook questions, past paper questions. It was mainly for practice. Now, this one, in this notebook, I write down the problems that stumped me, that were challenging for me, and that pointed to a gap in my understanding. I would record the problem and write down not only the solution, but very importantly, the steps that led to it. Um, sometimes I will also include problems that I was able to solve, but did so in a long or roundabout way when in fact there was a much faster or simpler route. And I typically avoided putting problems from the exercises from my textbook as I found that they didn't re really reflect the style and format of the IB exam questions and they didn't have the mark schemes either. So in this notebook, I mainly put exam style questions from the chapter tests that my teacher gave. And these chapter tests are basically just past paper questions. Yes, the syllabus is different, but there are still many overlaps. And these specific problems were directly relevant to the chapter that we had just finished and test the skills included in the new syllabus. So after I did a chapter test and my teacher handed back my paper, I would go over the questions that I got wrong and ask my teacher for the mark scheme and I found the mark schemes really helpful not just to learn how to approach a problem but also to get used to the way that IB marks my papers and what's expected of different command terms in essence what the examiner is looking for so these are typically the problems that I would put in this little black book finally this my third notebook I know it looks basically the same as the first one but never mind that um, Basically in this notebook, I collect, well, okay, so after I finish a chapter in class, I would flip through the chapter in my textbook again and ask myself if I were walking into an exam today or tomorrow um, to be tested on this chapter, what are the essential things that I need to know that I don't yet know? So this can be formulas, techniques, strategies, definitions, uh, tips and tricks that were not in my textbook and I really like to write down number steps as well were relevant of course and finally this is very important calculator reminders so I would write down the buttons that I needed to press to perform a particular function on my calculator and this was definitely a good reminder because sometimes it's easy to forget so I would then write down all the key points in my notebook but in my own words your textbook might have an end of chapter recap like the one in my textbook but the way that my textbook defined and explained terms and concepts often felt very wordy so and i found that i could express basically the same ideas in much fewer words in a way that made sense to me so um, the point is basically to collate the super important information the super important and essential points and compact them so as you see, I tried to, yeah, I tried to put a lot in, fit a lot in one page. And this is not to save paper, but rather it's because it actually helped me to get through revision. 
Um, so let's say that I'm going to have a test on a chapter and I didn't really feel like studying. So it's much more motivating to look at my notebook and see that I only have four or five little pages to read instead of eight or nine pages, for example. And of course, the length depends on the chapter. Some chapters, they build on previous concepts that I've already that I've already encountered in my previous um, pre-IB years, whereas other chapters introduce a lot of new content. So use your discretion. I also use different colors and highlighters just to make it more organized, legible, and visually stick better because I'm very much a visual learner. So during the semester, if a chapter test is coming up, I don't really read the exercise notebook at all. I like to do a combination of solving out worked out examples in my textbook, solving through any problems I could get my hands on, and right before the test, I would go over my review notebook just once, just to refresh my memory. And then after I had gotten the chapter test back from my teacher, I would add the difficult problems that I missed in my little black book, which I typically used to review for semester and mock exams. And I would simply cover the answers and try to solve the problem. So all in all, I found it super helpful to have three notebooks for math. In the very beginning, I actually just used one, but once I started flipping through my notebook to find something and never being able to find it, I realized that this was definitely not a good idea. So with these three notebooks, I knew exactly where to look to find exactly what I needed to find. So my next tip is to print out the formula booklet and start using it early on whenever you're doing problems. I'm guilty of not really doing this well. Uh, I didn't really pay attention to the formula booklet until sometime in my second year, I think. Evidently, it didn't make or break my score, but I definitely think that familiarizing myself more with it and knowing what's in there and what's not in there could have helped me to be a bit more efficient in my exams and not waste time flipping through it furiously trying to find something. My next tip is to practice with your calculator. You really do not want to walk into an exam knowing how to do a question, but forgetting which buttons to press on your calculator. Some questions you can't even do without a calculator. And by the time exams roll around, I really think you should be super comfortable with your calculator and know where everything is. My next tip is to check out the Revision Village IB Math YouTube channel. And they have a bunch of videos. They're great for getting introduced to or reviewing a topic. And they have not only math applications HL, but they also have analysis HL SL, applications SL. So definitely do check out their videos and maybe it'll be helpful for you. All right, so my next tip is to treat your chapter tests, semester exams, and mocks like the real thing. What I mean is try to strategize. Test taking tips will probably take a whole other video, but basically remember that in the IB exams, the questions are not in the order of difficulty. So you don't have to do the questions in the order that they appear. And do use your five minute reading time to read through the questions. I typically prefer to start with the easiest questions and the ones that I was most confident in, but of course that's up to you. All right, so just a few more tips for the weeks or months leading up to the exams. As you probably know, May 2021 was the first session in which the new math syllabus uh, was tested. So that meant that we didn't really have past papers that directly catered to the demands of the new syllabus. Nevertheless, even though we were the guinea pigs, there are definitely overlaps, as I mentioned. So I asked my teacher for questions from past papers related to a specific topic, such as matrices or complex numbers. Of course, the disadvantage of this is that I couldn't really replicate an exam setting for myself, as the real IB exams have a variety of problems from a variety of topics. But I was able to time myself. So if a question was worth 10 marks, I set the timer to 10 minutes. Obviously, I couldn't do this in the real exams, 
but it made me a lot more conscious of how much time I was actually spending on a question since that was my main weakness. So in the weeks leading up to the exams, I would do a bit of these questions every day and a lot of them made their way into my little black book. Um, however, I will add that some parts of the AI syllabus are definitely new additions and have never been tested before. And that's why sometime in the weeks before the IB exams, I did go over the syllabus and highlight any of the topics that I may have missed in my revision. And I couldn't find past paper questions for a lot of these, unfortunately, but these are mainly just a few subtopics and I still managed with the textbook examples and problems and made sure that I thoroughly understood the topic. All right, that's it for this video. I hope you guys found it helpful. Keep in mind that there is no one way, one formula to get a seven. So some of the strategies that worked for me might not necessarily work for you and vice versa. And of course, there's also the IA. And so do experiment with your study methods and find what works the best for you. And this is all based on my personal experience. So if any of you just graduated the IB and you took AIHL, let me know your study tips. I'd love to hear from you guys. Yeah, so thank you for watching this video. Please give a like, subscribe if you found it helpful at all. And I'm open to your suggestions as well. So let me know what IB related questions you have or you want me to talk about next. And to all you IB folks out there, I just want to add that you can do it. I honestly didn't think it would be possible for me, but it is very much possible. So yeah, just remember if you put in the time, if you put in the effort regularly, even if just a bit every day, your hard work will pay off and you will see progress. So thanks again and see you soon.